Yeah, Taylor. Oh man. All right. Anyway, uh, you guys were in Idris, right? At the hotel. Yes. We're in Idris. I completely remember. Yeah, that a uh, a bear attacked you in the taiga. Yeah, yeah, it did. <laughs> it wasn't a tiger. It was not a tiger. It was definitely a bear. Bruh. <laughs> well, um, you're free to go about your day. All right. Well, I guess I start my day with with uh, some meditation, but stand up, see that Phelan's not here, and go great. Great. We, um, I guess we're on our own. Uh, I, we're, we're in a, a city that's landlocked, right? Yeah. I made Which means... a Bloody Mary. Oh, you don't have Lexi's parrot anymore. <laughs> we don't have Lexi's parrot anymore. Oh God, we're gonna have to walk. We have to walk to Australia from wherever we are. I make myself a bloody Mary. Actually, actually, I've got a question. Is there, is there a side side job that we can do that is closer? Um, that won't lead to any major story elements. <laughs> well, the um, the cross organization missions are exclusive to their to their agents, but um, you could try well, to then, find something. Well, and I guess we. Uh, can we just like borrow Phelan's parrot and just fly to her ship, borrow her ship, and go to Australia? How about we just use a taxi? We have taxis? There's caravan taxi services. Fuck yeah, let's use one of those. <laughs> um, do you have. How much gold do y'all have currently? I have zilch. Zero. How much did she Nada. have? Let me pull up her sheet. You guys can steal her money. 320. I have 320. Oh, that's plenty of money to work with. Okay. Well, um, you would know that at the city gates, there's like a there's a business set up there where they have drivers for rent that can take you places. Cool. Well, without the parrot, I guess we're using them. <clears throat> yeah. Um, one taxi to where's the ship? Ladroth. One taxi to Ladroth. This guy with a pipe uh, sitting at a desk, um, looking at a paper, looks at you and goes, Ladroth, huh? Eh? Not the farthest place. Yeah, it'd run you maybe like 80 gold. 80? Cool. He says, what? Is 80 too much for your piggy bank? Try more like 20. 20. Let's go ahead and do some rolls for negotiation. Let's see what you got, Albert. This is a straight D20. <laughs> Bruh. Oh wait, is low good in this instance? Uh, low is not very good. <laughs> Okay, seven. <clears throat> he says, okay, okay, I'll admit. You saw through my premium price. I promise you I'll give you a good deal for your wits. 70 gold. 50. <laughs> 65. <laughs> it says 60 on that sign right there. 60 it is. Sold. All right. Uh, he whispers, he, he, uh, he takes the gold and he turns to uh, this guy uh, over, like, brushing some horses. He goes, hey, tell Johnny they need to ride to La Drave. And he goes, all right. And he looks to be, like, a 14-year-old boy, kind of like, not really a servant, but maybe like a apprentice. 
he runs over and fetches some guy with scraggly long hair and he walks out with a big uh, bold beard and says does somebody need a ride yeah we do Madroth, please that'd be us easy enough hop in he he pulls out this uh, a decently cared for wagon looks pretty nice are we doing a time skip or uh we'll do a time skip and i will do a roll to see if you encounter anything along the way travel montage <laughs> seven okay so you guys uh, start rolling down the road. Let's say it's about a two-day travel to Ladroth uh, from Wagon. The, f the sun begins to go down. As you guys began in the morning, it was, qu it was quite a long trip. You got a day down and out of your way. The driver uh, pulls out of his wagon uh, like a, a whole, whole bunch of camping supplies. Big old tent. Uh, Equipment for a, to start a fire and such. He says, we'll start here for the night. All right. Um, I don't necessarily need sleep, so I guess I'll just meditate in the center of camp next to the fire. Okay. Tent set I'll up. I'll, I'll sleep, sure. So he has a tent for you, Elber, and a tent for himself. They're like little individual mini tents. Oh, yeah. He ties up the horse and stuff to to a tree, and goes I will put, to sleep. take my armor off and sleep. Okay. So, um, Dante, go ahead and give me a perception roll. Fourteen. You hear um, voices coming from down the road. Um, do they say anything? Uh, you can hear commotion, but you can't really hear words, per se. It's kind of just bits a bit distant. Can I, uh, go to the edge of the camp, see if there's anybody, or see if they're dangerous, or just, you know, other travelers? Well, they seem to be, um, they're not quite common folk, nor are they men of authority. You could probably guess that these guys look like ruffians. Ruffians? Mm. All right. I'll uh, stand my ground to where I where are uh, where I am on this camp, and let them know that I see them. So you like um, stand off on the side of the road, just watching them as they walk by. Yes. Hand and sword. Okay, a couple of them uh, were talking and laughing and just having conversation. And as they notice you standing there, they approach and they suddenly stop the conversation. They stare at you as they stride toward you. The horse slows down to a crawl as they pass you. And one of them speaks up to say, Hey, demon, what are you doing out here all alone? Minding my business as you should. Says, Move funny, along. Funny seeing a demon like you around Idris. What brings you around here? The Demon Slayer Corps. I am to join. You're a Demon Slayer? This guy thinks he's Axis, does he? The other one starts laughing. He says, you look like a little demon spawn to me. Um, are they moving to be threatening? They just... They seem like bullies, but they're not approaching you in any threatening way. All right. Yeah, they I'll take their time them. to they take their time to ride past you slowly and just kind of poke at you, but they're not gonna. They don't seem to be encroaching on you. Can I jump forward as if I'm going to attack, but not? See if they flinch. One of them flinches, and the other two <laughs> laugh at him. <laughs> Alright, then I'll go back to the center of camp and re uh, resume my meditation. Okay. You head back and sit down as you just kind of eye them walking along. Eventually the night, 
passes peacefully, nothing else occurs, and the sun comes up. Fucking jackass sons of bitches. <laughs> the, uh, the driver wakes up and yawns. Oh! Kind of like... He rolls out of bed in like his boxers and he walks over to like a crate and pulls out some uh, some like cured bacon. He says, Who wants breakfast? I'll take some. You get three slices of bacon. Oh boy. <laughs> three slices of bacon. Does Albert wake up as well? No. Alright. He starts getting ready and then once everything's packed up. Uh, he loads everything on the wagon, and he checks to see if Elbert is awake. Is Elbert awake? No. He kicks your tent, and it falls apart on top of you. <laughs> says, Oi, get up! We have, we have, uh... <clears throat> I have to earn that 80 gold you're paying me. 80? Or 60, rather. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I gotta earn your 60 gold, don't I? What kind of scam are you running? <laughs> Yeah. All right. He's gonna hop in the my, wagon. I guess I'll get I'll get <laughs> get my shit together and get in the wagon. All right. Get what, the fucking wagon, Shinji. Once everything is loaded up and ready to go, he takes off, and you guys proceed down the road. You along the way find traders, travelers, um, occasionally agents of the of uh, of the cross organization, judging by their yep. robes. Do they try to kill me? No, they just eye you as they ride by. Okay. I'll eye them right back. It's a little less suspicious because you have a paladin with you. Okay, cool. <laughs> There's a demon hanging out with a paladin. It's quite weird. But, I mean, like if the paladin's not attacking him, he's probably fine. Am I, am I really, like, a paladin, though? <laughs> well, I mean, they they assume you are. <laughs> I mean, you kind of look the part. Don't you have, like, crosses all over your armor? And... Probably. And a fucking sword, shield, big-ass shield, heavy armor. I'm sorry, Chris, I've already forgotten your character's name. Is it Elbert? Oh, oh. fuck, it's Hildy. <laughs> Shit. I need to change that on my screen. Hildy. There we go. Although it's a different Hildy than the original Hildy. Very different. <laughs> so eventually I'm, I'm you guys... Not, I'm not quite sure of her character yet. It's the evening. Um, it is dusk when you reach Ladroth. As you arrive to this remote village, you see people kind of packing up and heading in for the day uh, at their in their homes. People taking their farm equipment and putting it away people with uh, fishing rods and their catch of fish heading over to their houses. All right, cool. We're in Ladroth now. Awesome. Let's get to the ship. Let's get to the ship. Start sailing to whatever this world's equivalent of Australia is. Okay. Ship is free to be taken. Nothing's happened to it. It's still just tied up to the docks. Lemuria. It's always Lemuria. So, as you guys are sailing away from Ladroth, as the, the beach shrinks from view and disappears into the horizon, so too does the sun, and the moon reveals itself, uh, transitioning to nighttime. Mito should be easier to navigate via the stars. It could be. Yes. Um... Lucky for you, I have an impeccable sense of direction, so we won't need it. I swear. Yeah. So I you guys to... are not um, pirates, nor are you sailors by profession. So, uh, who who here will be uh, steering the ship? I have an impeccable sense of direction. I have a diploma. Honest. Okay. So... I volunteer Hilde. All right, so Hildy, I just need a, a, a simple D20 navigation check from you. 
God, I hope this is gonna go well. <laughs> I have a diploma! Honest. Bruh! Shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So you guys sail through the night, and uh, you see Hildy examining the stars and thinking, is it that star, or is it, or is it this one? Which system was for... <laughs> Wait, do uh, I have a magic GPS? Is magic GPS a thing? Uh, no. Is GPS a thing? No. There's maps and compasses. And like fancy like little trinkets that you use for like uh, star navigation, but um, I don't think you guys have any of that. I think Phelan had all of that stuff. Phelan was very good at navigation. Shit. Phelan actually didn't even have to roll for navigation. <laughs> She's so good at it. Uh, well, you guys sail and sail and sail. And eventually, you guys are... Where is it? Oh, shit. That's not right. Where'd it go? In game chat, maybe? Oh, here it is. LDR, okay. are, are you it. sure this is the right direction? Yes! Are you sure it's not? So you guys know. are starting to see uh, land up ahead uh, way too soon. <laughs> way sooner than you expected. Um, see, it's probably not... I get where you were going to. It's a little early for us to be running for land, don't you think? No. Are you, are you sure this is Australia? Yes. Can I, can I look at the map and the compass? Sure. No. I'm, I'm sure there's one. On, I'm sure there's this stuff on the ship. Actually, sure. It's in the captain's uh, quarters. Can I roll to see where we are? Roll to to navigate. Oh damn! Nineteen. You look at the map and you. Um, are able to tell immediately, also from your surroundings, that you guys are heading north when you're supposed to be heading south, and you've hit Itania Magi. Itania Magi. Which Great. is the uh, city of um, of wizardry and magic. Cool. Uh, Hilde, I need, I need you to give me a um, complete 180. <laughs> I know where I'm going. How dare. All right, so how about this? I will navigate, you will steer. What? What's wrong? What was that? You cut out for a second. Why? What's wrong with my navigating? Huh? We're going north when we should be going south. We totally meant to go to Otania Magi. <laughs> no, no, this is Australia. We're going south. No, well, we can't go so far north that we'll start heading south because we'll eventually run into land like we just did. <laughs> no, no, we didn't. That, that's, us, that's Australia. Or Lemuria. Hilde, you're a paladin. You're not supposed to be lying. I'm not lying! I don't know what I'm doing. Just innocently stupid. <laughs> it's just chaotic stupid. All right. Uh, Hilde, you gotta, you gotta turn us around. We gotta go south to Australia. This is, this is not... This is the... Are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm looking at the map. I got a compass here. Where? And I point to Magi, whatever the fuck. Tanya, we're gonna get lost, but okay. We need to go, and I point down to to wherever the fuck we need to go. We need to go down here. Fine. Okay. Easily enough, the the ship steers in the right direction. <laughs> Give me heading one eight zero. Let's see. So it's going to take you guys about, I want to say, two days to reach Meat Soul. 
Uh, two days? From, like, the far north? Yeah. Damn, that's like... Fuck, are we on a... Travel's pretty fast. Ship? Yeah. Okay. Travel... Well, the seventh world, size-wise, is smaller than Earth, for the most part. All right. So right, cool. distances are shorter than they seem. So it shouldn't say take the, let's say, three months that I thought it would. Yeah, no. <laughs> you can pretty much cross the world in about three days in the seventh world. Cool. By, um, by airship and ocean ship. We should get an airship. Well, actually, airships are, are faster are than we... ocean ships because they have jet propels. Are, are we on an airship? You are on a boat. You're on like a wooden ocean ship. Because Lexi is not rich and she owns a basic ship. <laughs> I imagine oh, it just looks... This is Lexi's right. ship. <laughs> well, we, yeah. we had an airship that you... was gracefully given to us by the king of whatever the fuck. Yeah, he gave you an airship to get to your ship. Because you guys were going to have to cross the North American continent to get to her ship. <laughs> Anyway, all right, so you guys turn in the right direction. Um, you guys travel through the night. I'm going to roll off Discord for stuff. And things. And things, because I realize I can't really surprise you with stuff if I roll on there. <laughs> Where is it? Where's my dice? Here it is. Okay. You guys sail through the oceans. No storms, no sea monsters, no pirates, nothing. No storms, no sea monsters, no pirates. That means something bad is happening. Something something very bad may be happening. Demon sense is tingling. <laughs> the sun comes up, the day goes by, you're bored, you're on track. Ah, and, no the, news is good news. and the sun goes down. All right, um, Hilde, how about you get some rest? I'll I'll get us back. I'll get us the rest of the way there. Don't have to tell me twice. Go go underneath the deck and fucking pass the fuck out. All right, there's like those little hammocks below deck that like <laughs> pirates use. All right, here we go. And off goes the armor. As the next uh, evening comes around and uh, the moon comes up and the sun goes down, the winds start to pick up. Run down bar. You can and see clouds in the distance and you're heading right toward them, like uh, storm clouds. Well, well, shit. Uh... Can I make sure that the way I'm going is through the storm clouds or around the storm clouds? You can roll for um, navigation and sailing to see. Uh, just give me a d20 and we'll see if you can deal with this storm. Ten. Ten. Uh, you, you're afraid that if you were to steer around the storm, you might not. You might lose your way. Mm, fuck. Well, looks like we're going through a storm. Oh, I hope Hildy's okay with... Uh... With a little bit of rocking. Okay. Ox was made for rocking. Within the hour, rain drip, 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 drip. rain slowly. Hold on, wait. I have rainy. I have a rainy mood app. <laughs> Ox was made. At for first, rocking. it was just occasional drops here and there, and then a few more, and then a few more, and then all of a sudden. In sweeping progression, it quickly uh, explodes into full-scale heavy rain. Oh, oh, fuck! Man, that uh, game sucked. Your vision is um, impeded by this just this downpour of water. You can't see for shit. The waves are beginning to rise higher and higher and become uh, more and more violent. Uh, a, a, a strike of lightning cracks through the sky. Thunder follows, shaking your ship. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, cool. Can I, uh... I probably shouldn't try to... I'll try to handle this myself before, you know, panicking and waking up Hildy. Okay, go ahead and um, display some ship knowledge for me. I, need, I want you to roll to see if you know what to do with the sails in this situation. 
All right. Swap the poop deck. Heighten the... Whatever the fuck. I don't know. Do the thing. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Shit. You, Damn. you forget that... You forget to to adjust the sails for the storm, and you leave them up fully. Um, oh, now I want you to roll for ship handling at the wheel. Ten. Ten. The storm oh. hits you unbelievably hard. You can't see anything. The wheel is spinning around violently. <laughs> Uh, and you're having trouble controlling the rudder, uh, unable to keep on course. The sails are, uh, where well, you see one of the sails kind of like, half of it rips free. A few of the, a few others, uh, some holes are well, ripped in the middle of them. Well, shit, then this is, this is where I start yelling, all hands on deck! <laughs> uh, uh, Hildy, you are awoken the by... The, the floor, yeah, the ship is crashing all over the place. It's loud as fuck. You can hear lightning bolts. A uh, downpour of water is like seeping in below deck. There is no way you do not. There's no way you sleep through this. Uh, Hildy, I need you on deck. Need some help. Uh, yes, sir. What the fuck is going on? Well, uh, good news is we're still floating. So as Hildy, you, you throw open the door from below deck to rise to the surface. Um, you can see just massive tidal waves crashing into the ship. The, the Dante's having trouble controlling the wheel. There's holes in the sails. One of the sails is ripped partially off. Uh, would you like to roll for me to see if you can... Rip, uh, Get the, get the, Aid Dante in handling the storm. Uh, sure. Uh, I'll roll, and for flavor text, I'll try uh, shortening the sails. Seventeen. You see immediately that the sails were mishandled, and you go and um, begin playing around with the ropes, taking them down for safety, and um, and there is no more trouble with the winds now uh the dante now that the sails have been taken down you're able to control the ship much more easily go ahead and give me another steering roll uh okay four motherfucker i still have infernal strength right <laughs> you do um damn you're just not very good at controlling rudders apparently and uh, you, you're trying to go left, but you turn too hard, and you go harder than you thought you would. So then you try to, like, go softer, but then it's too soft, and you just don't really, like, know how to handle the changing waves. Um, the storm eventually passes within the hour, or within, the, like, two hours, I'd say. The tides yeah. calm down. The rain stops. And your, show, your ship's just kind of floating there in the wake of this storm. Vibin. Phelan's gonna kill me. Phelan's gonna kill both of us. Nah. Eventually, morning. morning comes. All right, and then have, do we do we reach our location? Uh, give me a navigation roll. You seem to be having better luck than me. You want to try <laughs> navigating again? Yeah, sure. Judgmental prick. 17. I'm not judgmental. <laughs> you guys managed to stay on track uh, despite all of the, uh, the storm knocking you around. And um, you're able to push on through and you see the coastline of the Australian continent. Oh, thank God. You sail around the coast toward where you know Mitzel would be, and you find some docks. Uh, do, do you know how to dock this thing? No. I don't know I'll how to dock this thing. I'll take a shot. Thing. What's the worst thing? 
Yeah. Okay. Dude. Yeah, like, like, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> you can sink the ship. <laughs> and destroy it. I'll give you a free roll. You guys are able to dock this thing. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> I don't want you fucking this one up too royally. I, I think I felt that this is what it felt like to land my first plane. It's like, I have no idea how to put this thing on the ground without killing myself. <laughs> uh, you guys park up and um, you see something of a weird village slash town slash city. It's, it's um, Mitzel is a very interesting place. You pull up and so, some, some, some Ligonians run up to you and they help you dock your ship. How would you describe the architecture here, I guess? Um, or... Kind of like... Almost like a... It, Italian in nature? Like, it's a lot of... Little shops and buildings with tile roofing and... Um, like, roofing, florence kind buildings. of architecture? Alright, or, si- but... or, may- or maybe even Sicily, something along those lines. Cool. Neato. So you guys can um, go ahead and park up. These people who appear to have, like, animal traits to them walk up to you and they go ahead and start tying ropes to your ship, seeing that it's damaged, and they're like, holy shit. So Yeah, we, we done fucked up. They say, well, you guys don't look like pirates, that's for damn sure. Yeah. But what if we are pirates? Um, How do you know? Then you, then you got a hell of a disguise on. So these guys are interesting. So some of them have, like, one of them's like a human, and he has, like, a, a cat tail and, like, cat claws on his hands. The other one kind of looks like half human, like, with, like, dragon claws and kind of, like, dragon-esque head. How we discovered the land of the furries. Yeah, sure. You would know that <laughs> Lagonians are, um, are a race of people who are, like, part animal, part human. All right. Oh, we discovered cat girls. One of them is a cat boy. <laughs> uh, and also the world's kind of racist toward them, and yeah. <laughs> Poor oh, thing. Okay. Poor things. So, they live so on Australia like, for a reason. Kind of like vacuo Ruby kind of situation. Okay. So they help you out. And they go, so what brings a couple of strangers like you to meet Soul? A uh, demon. A demon? Yeah, uh, have you heard of a, a demon, I think it's killing people? We didn't, did we get any? So, um, information on this demon, it is a demon legionary, and it is, uh, on, it is being hunted by the Cross organization, and it's in hiding, and they, uh, their scouts found out that he was hiding here somewhere. And what do I know about Demon Legionaries as a demon myself? Um, Demon Legionaries are the upper echelon soldiers. They're not quite like generals or anything like that, but they're definitely like lieutenant officers. Or yeah, yeah. So he was he was higher than me when I was in the Demon Army. Great. Oh, he's far higher than you. Yeah. So like, there's scrub tier cannon fodder, which is you, me. And then there's, um, like, standard soldiers, which are called sentinels, which are just average soldiers. And then above them are legionaries, and above them are, um, are like, um... Centurions? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm looking for. They, they use, like, Roman rankings to, to measure their legion. And uh, at, the upper, at, the, at the very top are the noble bloods. All right. So this guy is about two tiers above you in military rank cool let's find and hopefully kill him okay well the Lagonians say well we haven't heard about a, a demon doing any killings here but uh, I'm sure maybe our police force could help you I don't know they might know That's something right. all right uh, can you point us in the direction of that building sure so he, he leads you into the city, and it looks like a countryside Italian village, but it's large in size. Lots of small buildings, very homey, 
uh, very quaint, very nice, but it's large, very heavily populated. You head through the through a narrow street up a hill, and he takes you over to a little police station. All right. He says our uh, our guard isn't. Um, isn't the most militaristic, but I mean, you know, they keep the peace here. That that works. All right. Well, if there's anything else you need, just you'll catch us at the docks. We we work at the docks. Thank you, random citizen. Uh, yes. Um, bye bye. <laughs> he sprouts like bird wings and flies away. So that's it's a neat trick. I should probably learn how to do that. As you approach the police station, it's um, it's not a large building, but it's a one-story place with a double door entrance, and uh, people are strolling in and out of it in small numbers. All right. Uh, Hilde, you got any experience working with the cops? No! Neither do I. So let's find out. Let's, let's find out what, they, uh, what they're like here. Hopefully they don't kill me on sight. A cap. What was that? A cap. All right. Let's go. Uh, we walk inside. Okay, the door opens up and it's just like a boring police station office. There's uh, a couple of people walking around in what look like to be guard uniforms. Nothing too fancy. And there's a person at a desk looking to greet you. I say, uh, yeah, can we help you? Yes, we are representatives of the Cross Organization. It's a, a middle-aged woman, and she, t- like, takes her glasses, lowers them to the tip of her nose, and, like, eyes you up and down and goes, you're a demon. Yes, yes, I am. Also, I don't see no Cross Organization signet on you. Uh, do we not get those? No, you're not initiates yet. You have to just do this on your own. Oh. Well, we're we're initiates, we're, or we're. Look, you want us to kill some demons or not? She goes. Ugh. Just strange to me. That's all. Uh, what do you need to know? Uh, we've been told by the organization that there is a demon in the this vicinity. Here we've right. been tasked with destroying said demon. Here in Mitzel, huh? Well, um. Haven't heard any mass murders going on, but uh, we could look at potential hideouts. You said he's hiding here? He's hiding here. Or in somewhere near here. Okay. Well, um, we know a lot of people hide out on the mountain over there, and she like walks up to the window and points at a particularly large mountain uh, beyond, just beyond the city. This is just the big red rock in Australia. Well, it's actually kind of forested, actually. Oh, all right. Yeah, Australia is not a, a barren desert like it is in real life in Seventh World. It's a forested rocky mountain. Cool. She says, well, we have a lot of things here in Meat Soul. The wildlife here is um, quite unregulated, you'll find. There's a lot of criminals and mystical creatures and such that hide out out there with the, where the law doesn't reach. Cool. Uh, can we get... Do you know where we can get equipment, uh, supplies for treks into the wild up there, over there? Well, sure, yeah. We have plenty of people who go and explore the mountain and hike if you're looking for hiking stuff. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> or whatever it is you need. I mean, we have we have shops and stuff here. Hiking stuff, magical manacles, uh, possible detainment devices. Oh, she's like, well, do you want? We'll sell you some police handcuffs if you want some. Well, we got a load right. here. We don't use them all. <laughs> I mean, because I I still don't have any gold. Uh oh. No gold. Z- zilch nada. Uh, Time to start resorting to some more creative ways of making money. Are you going to sell yourself to a bear man? Maybe. <laughs> going to sell yourself to an actual bear? 
She says, well, if you don't got gold, I mean, you can always call an officer up there and he'll arrest him if you bring him in. A, a demon. Welp. She says, here, and on the house. She just takes a, a handcuff out of her dress, desk and throws it at you. Thanks. It is like basic <laughs> iron handcuffs. All right. Well, uh, thank you for your time. Hilde, let's 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 go. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Do you want to do anything in particular right now? Uh, no. Uh, well, Hilda, do you have any way that you can sense or detect demonic presences? Do I have any way that I could sense or detect demonic presences? Hmm. I would say yes. It, like you can kind of sense other demonic energy. Like if I concentrate or something, or do I have to roll? Or uh, yeah, concentrating would probably be the roll. Like you know the smell of demons, you can sense demonic aura that is near you but i sense none in the city right now no and it, it i mean you couldn't do it over long range you would have to be like if in the nearby area all right uh, so how about I can smell you i can smell you uh how about how about we uh, just pitter patter let's get at her uh Straight to the mountain. I want to kill a demon. Also, Chris, that I'm not saying that you can use this right now, but um, you do have your sense on holy ability would allow you to sense um, demonic aura and magic in near in oh. the nearby area. Well, then I could have. I lied. But How about we get to that mountain and then you use that ability? Uh... Sounds good. Okay. Well, you guys head to the mountain. Uh, as you leave the city, you find that the infrastructure very much just stops at the edge. And wilderness takes over in full force. There is a rough path up the mountain. Yeah, rough. All right, cool. Oh, that's my food. What do you think we're going to run into up here? There's got to be more than just the demon. Nothing good. That's for damn sure. Yeah. It's the reason he's choosing this spot. I, uh... I just hope they don't have abilities like mine. Or... So I, I swear to God, if they have better abilities than mine, Jesus Christ, can we? I don't want to think about it. Neither do I. But I don't have to worry about that. I don't think. You don't think? I don't think. Ilda, are you just a little big, a big, giant healing meat bot? What? Meat shield? Maybe. Mesky. I don't know. I, was, I still don't know this character's personality. Giant meat shield? Yeah, I, I understand. I think the events of Seventh World should uh, mold your character. Uh, I think it's very natural. I guess you play, yeah. you'll just kind of formulate it. Oh, I, I've, I'd never know what kind, what personality my character's going to have at the beginning of the game. I only know it by the end. <laughs> Pretty much. That's yeah. a fun way to play. Well, um, okay, so you guys are at the foot of the mountain. Are you just going to trek up the path? Yes. Okay. As you walk around, you notice birds flapping around. You see a moose walking through the forest. A moose? This far down? This far south? Yeah. 
Is a moose? Wow. Fuck. Let's see here. You guys, uh, as you're walking up the path, you notice a lizard man walking down with like a big backpack on him. He says, howdy. Howdy. He says, you two don't look the most prepared. Uh, you going hiking? Something like that. He says, well, uh... There's a lot of dangerous animals up there, and it's quite a quite a fall if you don't have your footing. I uh, put my hand on my my uh, my sword. And go, we'll be fine. I thought you were gonna say on your ass. All right. It says, okay, just don't mind me. You guys looking for anything in particular, or are you just going on a hike? Well, have you seen? Uh, well, they peculiar... might be an agent. An agent? What do you mean, an agent? An agent of the of the cross organization? No. Oh. He looks at you blankly. What? Do you want to use your sense demon ability? Yes, yes, I do. You sense no unholy from this man. But he sends plenty from me, right? Um, just you're not em you're not emitting any demonic energy, are you? I mean, no, so long not as you don't so so long as you're not using demonic powers or magic, he can't really sense you. All right. Yeah, his ability senses demonic magic. He doesn't sense demonic presence. There's a difference. And I get no, no uh, demon sense from him, right? No, you don't smell anything right. on him. I don't smell anything on him. Cool. Well, uh, I feel like we can possibly ask him some a, a, a few questions. Maybe. Sure. What's the what's the harm? Have you seen anything weird on the mountain? Uh, I'm. An unnatural amount of possible killings, uh, corpses leave, leaving, left everywhere, uh, red lights just at night. Are you looking for a, a predator? Uh, of sorts. Well, I, I saw an elk that was strangely killed. Most, uh, most predators here naturally go for the throat and um, use their claws to, to pin creatures down, but there was... This elk was um, brutally murdered. It was... It's not... It didn't look like the work of a, of a cat or a bear. It was too messy. I wasn't I really sure I... what it was, though, so I definitely got out of there. I didn't want to be around a predator. And how far up the mountain was this? Um, he says probably about a good mile and a half uh, northeast of here, up the mountain. Thank you. I uh, I suggest getting to town <clears throat> as quickly as possible because uh, this area is highly dangerous. Oh, okay. Uh, I was gonna go get lunch anyway. He starts walking down. All right. Best of cool. luck. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, we make our way up the mountain. He follows general directions, um, and eventually, go ahead and give me a perception check. Both of us? Yeah. Thirteen and ten. You guys are walking uh, along the path, and you're kind of in the general area. And you don't really see the elk that he was talking about. But you notice, um, Dante, you can kind of smell the remnants of, uh, like, of a, of a demonic scent. 
I draw my katana and say, a demon's here. A demon has been here. All right, if you say so. Uh, do I have a do I have a general direction of where the sense is coming from? Yeah, if you follow in your nose, you kind of vaguely start leading to your left. The fruity taste that shows. You eventually see um, some blood splatter on some bush leaves and stuff, and you come across this elk that he spoke of, covered in flies. Yeah. And it looks like its stomach was just ripped open, and its guts were spilled out everywhere. And the ribs were broken. And um, it just looks mangled. This has got demon written all over it. Alright, so, uh, do I have, do, do I still have a scent to follow, or? Uh, go ahead and give me, like, a survival check, or, um, or a tracking check. What the fuck? What's with all the 10s? 10. I will say, because of your increased sense of smell for demons, you're able to pick up on the tr on a on a trail of scent. And following that trail of scent, you eventually found some footprints. And they're humanoid, or yeah, they're they're humanoid. Oh, they look like fucking raptor feet. They look to be the shape of human feet, but they have. But it looks like on where the toes are supposed to be, it looks like claws might be there all right all right so we're gonna have to be careful from the here point here on out we're in danger sense mode if you the minute you see that demon i want you to pour every holy whatever you have into it ah, the shot. so at this point um do you follow the tracks we follow the tracks. The tracks eventually lead to the up, um, up the hill, and it begins to get pretty rocky. And um, the dirt eventually s becomes less and less prevalent. The grass and the trees recede, and it is now a rocky terrain. And you'd have to climb boulders and fallen rocks to ascend further. Yeah, we can keep going. Uh, can't be bad. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, it can't be too bad. Um, at this point, Hildy, I'll just uh, let you know that based on your knowledge of demons, <clears throat> if you're within a decent range of this thing, your your magical sense would pick it up. Ah. <clears throat> so, uh, you can sense it, and as you ascend t toward where your magic detects uh, a blip on your map, basically, you find the mouth of a cave. This must be its lair. Hmm. Sounds about right. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Are you gonna stealth in, or are you just gonna go barreling in there? I mean, I'm a paladin. Uh, to quote Company of Heroes 2, ain't no sneaking around in this thing. <laughs> You'd be surprised. You can try to roll if you if you want to. I can't hurt to try. It's up to you. I mean, if you roll a one, it could hurt you. Whoa. <clears throat> oh, give it a shot. All right. Dante, as you're climbing the rocks, you kind of, a few of them come loose beneath your feet and they fall and you can hear them crack, 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 crack as they fall down. Um, but Hildy, like a like a graceful swan in armor climbing up the rocks. 
but nothing seems to emerge from the cave. All right, good. As you approach the cave mouth, you can see a large fire lit within, uh, glowing against the stone walls. But no people, no person, no demon. Well, you can, like, um, you can't see where this fire is coming from, but you can see the light kind of, like, emitting on the walls. If you wander deep in, deeper in, you can get a full view of the room. Ah, all right. I'll scoot. You can further. tell that there's a fire in there, but you don't see the fire itself. Okay. <clears throat> so as you stealth in, you find that this place has been made into a home. There's a large fire in the center. There's a wooden desk with a wooden chair and things on it. And um, a demon seems to be sitting there. There's a cooking... Or not a cooking pot. Um, there's just like a pile of like fucking dead animals in there. Shit. Well, cats or... Oh, no, they're just like a disgusting mess. All right, so I can uh, we can see the demon, right? Yeah. So this guy actually, I can describe to how he looks to you. <clears throat> uh, let me get a picture to see. Yeah, this would be a good one. Oh, perfect. All right. Yeah, this works just fine. So imagine this, but with wings. I'm going to post it in the Seventh World uh, in-game chat. Imagine this, but with wings. Oh, fuck. <laughs> this Great. red demon with leathery-looking skin and legion armor, uh, like a, a armored skirt around his waist and metal bracers on his arms, turns to look at you bare-chested. And in a demonic voice with red glowing eyes, turns to you and says, I smell a baby spawn. He gets up out of his chair, spreads his wings, and approaches you. I slash it as one of his wings. Oh, okay. We're not here to talk, we're here to kill you. Straight to the point, okay. I like it. Building now! All right, so you're going to swing at him. Let's open with some holy fire. Eight. As he opens his mouth to talk to you, you just lunge and stab through his wing, uh, and your titanium sword just pierces clean through it, and he goes, ah! He's going to... No flying for you. As your sword penetrates through, he's going to try to dig both his claws into your chest. What about Hildy's holy fire? Oh, did you holy fire? Yeah, a lot of holy fire. Okay. Roll. Eight. You stab through his wings, and as he ch as he readies his hands to grab you by the chest, he just gets engulfed in holy fire, and you can hear him uh, just roaring in this demonic, deep, deep demonic voice as he like stumbles backwards. His flesh is seems to be disintegrating within your the holy of your flames. He uh, I activate uh, fucking what what is my abilities? I activate uh, devil's power. Uh, devil's power. Draw my sword out and go for another slash. This time to his neck. Oh my god! You hit him in the neck, and uh, your sword stops halfway through it. And he goes, <laughs> and he can't breathe. Uh, can I just keep hitting at the hilt until it goes all the way through? <laughs> As your like, sword stabs into his neck and he tries to scream out, but he can't, he grabs um, your both hands on your arm and he snaps your elbow off. Ow. And immediately starts digging his mouth into your arm, uh, tearing at the flesh. Wait. He disembodies his, his arm to the elbow? Yeah. 
Like, just rip, rips off his arm. Like, whole ass arm. Yeah. Yeah, it happens sometimes. Uh, but this, but I will retaliate by grabbing his arm and biting into it. As you try to go in for his arm, the other one uh, grabs you by the neck and lifts you into the air, choking you. You can see as he's digging into the the hanging dead uh, Dante arm, his neck is regenerating as he devours it, while holding Dante in the air. Uh, I point my other my other finger like right between his eyes and activate infernal beam. Oh shit! Eleven. As he's busy devouring this arm, he stops for a moment and looks at you as you point your finger up and ex his face explodes. Um, a tuft of smoke billows where uh, Dante was once hanging from his hand. Dante, you are, I, have I'll been freed. Follow, I'll follow up with a radiant strike, imbuing my sword with, <coughs> the, with a holy aura. As, um, as he stumbles backwards from the explosion, um, you suddenly close the distance, Hildy, and strike him. Uh, and a burst of holy light gleams from his chest as his chest explodes open into dust. Uh, and he hits the ground. And then go or go for uh, one of his really probably meaty looking looking thighs and take a bite out of it. Oh shit, okay. Seven. Yeah, you just start digging into his thigh, and you can uh, you can see like your arm kind of bubbling as it regenerates slowly. Oh, thank God. He's gonna. Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, let me see if he. This is gonna be difficult. Three. Uh, yeah, he's just laying there, and he seems to be too wounded to to get up. I uh, grab my sword. Just keep boiling on him. Just keep boiling oh on him. God. We we both like fucking boot party, but with but with fucking swords on him. You just, just keep... you tear him to fucking pieces. And you can just hear him like trying to scream, but his chest has been blown open and just silent. You can see the silent uh, desperation in his eyes as he finally slips from uh, from consciousness and into death. Flawless victory. Oh yeah. He just beat his ass. <laughs> is his, I have a question. Is yes. his heart still intact? Uh. Not anymore. No, no. I, was I, like, I don't. Uh, Tildy, did you? Yeah, sure. His heart's fine. <laughs> All right, cool. I look at his heart and I start eating it like it's a fucking apple. Jesus Christ, Dante, your arm. After about five I think minutes. It's cannibalism. Oh yeah, but it's deli fucking delicious. Actually, animal. eating demons gives him more health than eating humans. Demons, uh, yeah, demons eating demons is a very natural thing. Dem's good eating. Dem so, is good eating. Within like five minutes, your arm is fully regenerated. So now you just have this dead, mangled demon laying there on the ground. Cool. Mission com Wait, were we supposed to bring something back for, like, confirmation that we killed this thing? He wanted the head. Oh. The head that I imploded? Shrug. You need some kind of proof. Um. The arm. I guess the arm would work. Yeah, you we could, could also uh, you could lob off his arm. Well, let's then hope I, I don't get. I might as well try to bring what's left of his head. <laughs> like, like his his. Yeah, sure. <laughs> we'll bring what's left of his head. It's just like a. He looks like ground beef at this point. I can make I can make a demon burger out of him right now. Well, you know, well, you know, if they're really as good at their jobs as they say they are, they should be able to know what it fucking is. That's a good point. All right, so. Well, you we got the, the goods. We grab the demon pieces, put them in our bag, or like wrap them in stuff and put them in our bags, and then uh, I guess we. 
Is there anything else, in, like, anything uh, of value in this cave? Um, well, you can find a set of uh, legionary, uh, a legionary sword and his bracers. Wait, a legionary sword? Is that better than my titanium titanium katana? It's made of um, infernal steel, which is... I'll say, yeah, it's stronger than your titanium. It would be possible that I could reforge this into a katana. Possibly, yeah. It's not impossible. Alright. Yeah, Wrap it up. City, let's find a city and some spent to be willing to do that. Yeah. And then um, the bracers are made of infernal steel as well. So that would give you extra armor if you chose to wear that. Um, Hilda, do you need do you need armor? Uh, I could probably use some better armor. Yeah, that might be a good idea. All right, here you can have these bracers. Cool. All right. Doesn't really go with the rest of the outfit, but <laughs> it know. doesn't quite match, but it works. Um, go ahead and put that in your inventories on your uh, uh on your upgrade sheets. And uh, as far as other s items that you were looking for, you find a desk in. Um, you can see you find the like a a map, and on it you can see where a hell portal is. Oh shit! Uh, they would. The cross organization would be very interested in this. Sure, let's take it. Take the map. Okay. That's about all you could find in here. All right. Let's make our way back to the. Uh, back to the organization. That sounds like a plan to me, old buddy, old pal. Hopefully we can get there without destroying the ship. <laughs> Come see me on my ship. The Bebop. The Bebop. Alright, well, you guys head back into town? Sounds good. Do you stop off anywhere, or do you want to just go straight to the ship? I, well, maybe. Do you feel tired? Build out. Nah. Sure, we can stop off in an inn. Chill for a bit. Yeah. Okay. Have some tea. Maybe. Find a quaint little inn. It's too gold to stay for the night there. Done. Do 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 do. You guys wake up. Insert insert show montage here. Just like Sun comes up, and you guys awake, totally refreshed. Just chill montage. All Have right. Some tea, read a couple of books. Just, just chill. Just chill. After a after a day of hard labor. <laughs> after the day of jumping a motherfucker. God, we killed that guy fast. <laughs> That's what happens when you have a holy paladin with you versus a demon. <laughs> Chris's blows were very heavy. <laughs> cool. Uh, I gotta. I, you're definitely staying around. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's get back to the ship. Make our way to uh, wherever. You want to go back to Ladra? Yeah, Ladra. Okay. Well, you guys head over to the ship. The sails are still damaged, and um, they are in need of some repair. And how much is repair? Well, we'll, we'll just say you could give me a roll to see if you can repair this thing yourself. I'm sure Lexi All has right. repair supplies around, right? Right? How big is this ship, anyway? <sighs> I thought it was like a brigantine in uh, in uh, Sea of Thieves. Precisely. That's Two actually, masts. That's a pretty good um, evaluation. Have you seen the, the Sea of Thieves, Chris? No. Well, it's enough to where three or four people could run the ship. 
not much bigger than that. Yeah. It couldn't hold more than like six people. Yeah, the brigantine's for three people. And uh, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> but it looks like a proper wooden ship, like with a mast yeah. and a and a quarter deck and a steering wheel and all that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, somebody give me a roll. See what you can do to fix this. Come on. Oh yeah, I should probably roll too. Fourteen. Natural one. One. <laughs> uh, Dante. You, um... Uh, we'll say we, we made some... The the lion's share of the repairs, I would... There's probably still some 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 things that we need probably some help with. Kildy fixed all of the sails but one, which is the one that Dante uh, tried to fix and could not fix. <laughs> but uh, you guys are operational. <laughs> Dante, why are there burn, burn marks in this, in this sail? I don't know. I just touched it. <laughs> okay. You guys are good to say. I didn't sell. even touch it. Computer's doing something weird. I didn't even touch it. Go ahead and give me it. a navigation roll to get you on course. Whoever's driving or navigating. Oh, Lord. Here we go. Ugh. Oh, D. Seven. God damn it. Okay. Hilda, you are free to give me a roll too if you wish. Sure. Eight. Eight. You guys both look at the map together and you go you guys plot the course together. You both got it wrong. <laughs> um, you guys board the ship, set the sails, take off. And it isn't long before you guys are like the air's getting kind of chilly and then you see like a floating ice cap <laughs> fuck are we going south instead of north now fuck fuck all right i'm gonna i'm gonna check the map again <laughs> <laughs> give me another roll 13 Ba-doop. Ba-doop. okay that's enough to to realize, oh, we're heading south. If we turn directly the other way, we'll go north, and that's where we need to go, which gets you on track. Ildi, give me a course zero zero one. <laughs> Whatever you say, boss. All right, so the ship turns around. Air starts to warm up again. Things seem to be going smoothly. Okay. Um, you guys are sailing for the first day. Seems to be calm sailing. Thank God. So far. As you guys sail, you just... You see, like, a whale kind of emerge from the water and blow out of its bullet hole, go back under. Eventually. I go, oh. I go, neat, and then take a bite out of that demon arm I already have. <laughs> yes, Lark, I did say whale. <laughs> um, later on, as you sail, you eventually see a group of uh, mermaids kind of, like, motioning to you from the water. You hear one of them calling, Hello! Hello! Hi. They swim up to your ship, and they start to, like, kind of put their hands on the hole, and they're like, Don't you want to come down and say hi? I do need oxygen, correct? Yes. No, I don't want to come down and say hi. Oh, come on. I'm perfectly fine up here. Thank you very much. 
they follow you for a while, just like beckoning to you, but as you keep saying no, they eventually just go underwater and they never came back. Jeez, girls. Fucking... Take a hint. <laughs> eventually the sun starts to go down once again. Night. Sun night descends. Down, of town. Run down bar. Do you guys, um... Uh... Is Hildy sailing right now? Or is Dante sailing? Um, I guess I'll take over sailing since he'll be probably need sleep. Okay. Oops. In the middle of uh, dawn, daybreak happens. The sun comes up over the ocean. And you start to notice, um, like, a giant fin just kind of emerge from the water behind oh, you. Oh, no. And it's oh. just following you. Uh, I, I stomp on the, uh, the deck again, go, Hail Day! Hail Day, all, ah. all hands on deck! Ah! <laughs> All right, I emerge and... Yeah, all right. So, big fin, back there. Uh, I point to it, towards it. I'm pretty sure we can scare it off. We can both hit it with an attack. It's probably more scared of us than we are, than it is of... Uh, it's probably more scared of us than, than we are of it. Just leave it alone, we'll be fine. Oh, well, I hope you're right. I guess we continue onward to our destination. Okay. <clears throat> you see the, the fin descend under the water. I don't like it. But I'll accept it. Go ahead and give Probably. me a perception check. Probably just pissed off. 18. As you look over the railing into the water, you can notice a large silhouette under your ship. It didn't fuck off. It didn't fuck off. All Fire right, here we go again. If I were to throw a hellfire bolt down there, will it, will it reach it? Or will it extinguish before that? It would probably extinguish. Shit. That's my only ranged attack. Uh, uh, cool. Well then, um, I activate my Cloak of Satan and wait. Okay. Eventually, you can hear a crunch as you can hear wood snapping. That's not good. You know to... No. Uh, Hildy, are you above or below deck? Uh, above. Above? Okay. You can hear... So rudely awakened. You can hear the sound of wood break at the back of the ship. I get to the back of the ship. A large shark-like creature has bitten a hole in the back of your ship. Well, fuck. I don't think. I don't think. Oh man, Phelan's gonna be so pissed. Water is now kind of gushing in. Oh, Phelan's gonna be so pissed. I should have bought a better boat. Should have got a bigger boat. Well, this the so, fin kind of uh, actually sidles up to the side of the ship. I firebolt it. You hit the fin? Yeah, just hit the fin with a firebolt. Just be like, fuck off. You can I see it kind of jolt, and it plunges under the water immediately as you hit it. Um, Can't kill it!
Kill so immediately as it uh, as the fin descends underwater and the silhouette kind of fades away, it plunges out of the water into the air, and you find that it's um, and you see that this large shark-like creature flies up and tries to crash down onto the ship. Uh, can I jump up and just cut it in half? Four. You leap up and plunge your sword clean through its scales, breaking through easily with your titanium. Uh, and you rip a hole uh, right through its side as its guts kind of spill out onto the mast. Um, and both halves of it fall into the water. <laughs> Ooh. All right. Cool. At least once it gets close, I can cut it. You then notice... Uh, how long do we have until the ship sinks? Well, you haven't gone below deck to check how fast the water's coming in. All right, all right, all right. Uh, also, the, the 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 ocean is now red. Hildy, can you navigate? I'm gonna hopefully. Well, actually, I would probably set the ship on fire. Hildy, can you try to fix the ship while I while I get us back on course? Sounds good. All right, easy enough for Hildy to do. Chris, are you gonna roll? Oh yeah, probably. Wait, who's fixing the ship? Is Dante fixing it? Oh wow. Hildy, you approach... Wait, are you fixing it, Hildy, or are you steering? Yeah. Okay, so uh, Hildy, okay. you go down there and you find a good chunk of the hole missing as water's pouring out. You're able to push past the the floods and grab the spare wooden boards and a hammer and nails, and you just nail that bit shut. Completely sealing it perfectly. Nail that bit shut. And this is for navigation. Activate the pumps. Pumps. You mean the bucket? Yeah. <laughs> Hilly just starts bucketing out water. <laughs> uh, good. Not too long after this conflict, you guys find yourselves approaching the shores of Ladroth. Oh, thank God. Oh, we can get off this ship, and I can. Ne I am never getting on a boat without failing again. <laughs> Probably a smart move, all things considered. All right, you park up and the the villagers approach you again. They say, "You're back so soon." Yeah, we we did what we wanted to do. Cool. Are you gonna pay us again to watch your ship? I mean, you could watch your ship, please. I can't pay you. They just shrug and run off. Okay, cool. <laughs> I take I'm another bite. Anyway! Yeah. I take another bite out of that demon arm. Yum. Tasty, tasty, tasty. Demon arms don't decay as fast as human arms, you find. They stay fresh longer. There may be a market for this. <laughs> there may be a market for this. Welcome to D D D Dante's meat market. Don't ask where the meat comes from. <laughs> comes from hell. Comes from hell. All right. Well, you're in Ladroth. What would you like to do? Ah, yes. Hellishly good meat. Guaranteed. Ah. All right. Uh, we need to make our way to Idris. Okay. You can find a little taxi driver. It's just the same guys before. He's just sat there waiting for, you, <laughs> waiting for someone to take back to Idris. Oh, oh, neat. Hey, you again. Oh, hey. Uh... Didn't expect to see you back so soon. I don't think you expected to see us back ever. Me neither. But here we are. I take it you need to go back to Idris? Yes, yes. we do. How did I know as you're like coming walking over with a demon arm in your hand? <laughs> That'll be another 60 gold was the prior arrangement. 
Ah, but we're repeat customers, so we get discounts, right? <laughs> Go ahead and roll for me. 17, he says, I... That'd be true, I remember, we have a discount. Uh, 10 gold off for repeat customers. That's right. How did, how did, I can't believe you knew that. <laughs> That'd be 50 gold. Done. All right. You guys Me too. stroll through your two-day well, sure journey hope, back to uh, Idris. Well, I, I sure hope this, this same company services all the cities in the world. It's just the one guy who works every job. <laughs> it's just the one guy. <laughs> Fuck. So you guys uh, are just strolling through the taigas, the woods, the Asian forests, and um, as you're just strolling down the road, all of a sudden, a tree collapses onto your wagon. What? Go ahead. The fuck? You can roll to react to this however you would like to. I better not be paying full price for this. Fuck. Dante didn't even see it coming. <laughs> Hildy, would you like to roll? Sure. <laughs> you can just hear, you can hear like the 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 crackling, the cracking of wood, and you're like, what is that? And it, before you. Dude, 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 and just, dude. Like you turn, like a shadow looms over you, and you're like, "What the fuck?" And it's like, like as you look up to where the shadow's coming from, wham! A tree slams down on all of you, <laughs> smashing your wagon and you. You guys are pinned down beneath the enormous weight of this tree as a bunch of uh, bandits run out around you. We got them, boys! As they uh, immediately like. Um, kind of run up to you with weapons and, um, like, uh, just surround you with, uh, and start looting your wagon. I lift the tree off me. Okay. Uh, as you begin to lift off of it, they go, we got a demon! And one of them pulls out his sword and tries to hit you. I, uh, block it with my own sword. Okay, go ahead and roll for me. Seventeen. You it, expertly you throw the tree off with one hand, draw your sword, and parry locking blades with him. I then look him in the eye and go, "I am incredibly hungry right now. If you leave, you may and you may not be eaten." Let me see. Is he scared? I think. He goes. Oh! <laughs> uh. He looks to his boss. Let me see. As he looks to his boss, he starts to like back ways if he wants to run. The boss says, "If you run, I will personally eat your fucking heart." I decapitate. I decapitate the dude he's talking to. The boss or the 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 scared guy? The boss. Okay. You immediately lunge toward him and try to uh, slash at him. He raises his axe and locks blades with yours, and he goes, I ain't scared of a fucking demon, and he spits at you. I lift one finger and then use Infernal Beam, and then you've seen you've seen a, a, double, a 007, right? You have the laser going up the crotch thing. I want to just do that. <laughs> 13. He notices your uh, beam, and he tries to move his head out of the way, but he can't move his entire body, and you hit him. He avoids a, a head blow, but he falls to the ground with an explosion and goes, Ah! Oh! <laughs> Severely wounded. The other raiders are going to descend on you. Two of them are going to try to um, try to slam their clubs down on Hildy. If Hildy would roll to defend herself. Is Hildy present for this fight? Yes. Oof. Four. <laughs> As this fight breaks out, two clubs just smack Hildy either side of the head, knock, knocking you uh, rendered stunned against the, the fallen tree. Oh, shit. Uh, uh, I activate... I, I want to activate my new ability. I activate 
the chains of hell. Okay. This flame appears... Um, do you want one or two of them? Because you can do both if you oh. want. Let's go two. You uh, raise both your hands, fire emerging from both of them as chains are summoned out of them uh, 20 feet long. And then, like fucking Kratos and God of War, I want to start cutting into these these uh, these fucking bandits. Uh, maybe even like just find a way to hook the end to my sword, the end of the chains to my sword, so I could just swing the sword around. Yeah, I'll say you can swing these chains pretty hard. You swing your chains at the at the guys at Hildy. Is that who you're aiming at? Uh, the guy's close to Hildy, and maybe even use somehow use the chains to get Hildy out from under the tree. Okay, you swing your chains um, offensively toward these guys, smacking them with the chains, and they go flying through the air. Uh, and they just hit the ground, and they can't even... they don't get up. Good. The boss is going to try to get up and try to swing his axe at you. Uh, Dante. Oh, right. I <laughs> Five. As you swing your chains and hit those two, the boss comes up behind you and slams his axe straight into your back, like you were, as if you were just, uh, just a target board for him. Uh, the wound Ow. is very deep. He takes it out I, and tries to swing again down on you. I uh, turn my sword around and go for like the uh, stab while facing away from him. Or faces, yeah. Okay. Five. <laughs> the sword just plunges through his chest as he raises his axe for another swing and he pauses. He, goes, uh, 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 uh. he drops the axe and just falls to the ground. Alright, cool. I, uh. I uh, clean my blade, put it away, uh, and then use the chains to just kind of fuck up everyone. Just start beating everybody with your chains. <laughs> Easy enough. Um, these chains hit people so fucking hard, they're just knocked out. Cool. After, once all the uh, the bandits are dispatched, I'll unsummon the chains. Maybe lop off an arm of the, the, uh, the dude to eat. Okay. The uh, wagon driver is like, oh, holy shit. <laughs> I'm sitting there eating the arm going, oh, yeah, totally a shame. Oh my god, they're eating her. And then they're going to eat me. This guy might be terrified. Re Relax. Oh I'm not my gonna... god. Relax, you haven't tried to kill me. I'm not going to try to eat you. You guys, can, eat uh, that try to... you guys can find 80 gold off these guys, by the way. Oh, Nito. <laughs> he says, well, we don't have a wagon anymore. Should we go back to Ladroth and get another one? Or how far I mean, how... are we away from Ladroth? How far did we get? You probably traveled maybe like an hour before this happened. I guess we should make our way back. And then... Get another is wagon. Smaller, is there a smaller town Actually, you can stop along the way? Hang on. Oh, you guys are in luck. A trade caravan seems just happens to be coming down the road toward you. <laughs> they, oh, uh, I, uh, as they ride up, they go, "Holy moly, what happened to you guys?" Take a guess. Uh, I'll give you three guesses what happened to us. A band of bandits totally set up a trap and had a tree fall down on you, crushing your wagon, and foolishly tried to attack a demon and ended up getting eaten. Wow, first try. Wow. <laughs> first try. I mean... Yeah, I see this a lot. <laughs> really? No. You want to get in my wagon and I'll give you a ride? I'm heading to Idris. Sounds good. Hop in. Also, uh, I trade in. things. Do you guys want to buy anything? What do they have for sale? Uh, they have like spices and rope and general store ship. <laughs> do you eh. want a candle? They have candles. <laughs> eh. <laughs> do 
we happen to know that there are any spices that would fetch particularly good prices in wherever the hell we're going back to? To Idris? Yeah, sure, there's some expensive spices. But things that we can get on the cheap that we know are expensive there. Uh, give me an, give me a roll, just, just a general knowledge roll. Eleven. Um, uh, no, not by your expertise, you wouldn't know. Jeez, Hilda, have been playing too much Elite Dangerous? <laughs> Everything, Space. uh, every, all I may the... have done, look, I may have done some trading in my time. Okay. <laughs> Alright, well, you guys are able to travel the rest of the way pretty peacefully. You guys reach Idris, and the trader says, No need to thank me. I, um, I believe in karma, and I will be paid off soon by Lord, by the god Tigris. Bless him. All right. Have a good day. As he just <laughs> rides off. Cool. Let's, uh, I'm running out of demon arm here. So let's go, uh, let's go show them that we, we did this right, and... I think they'll be pissed that I ate a person. We won't find out until we go. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, Alright, well you guys head over to the HQ directly? Sure, sounds great. Alright. Secretary doesn't miss a beat. She sees the, the demon walk in, and she doesn't see many demons around here, so she goes, Back from your mission, I take it? I hold up the demon arm. Oh, good. Good. They're I'm happy to see you're able to handle it so well. Uh, let's go talk to your recruiter, shall we? All right. She just once again leads you into the elevator. Ba da da ba da da. Ba da 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 So there's just like a like a person at a desk or something. Yeah, it's just a, a guy at a desk with two chairs for you guys. I drop the de the arm on the desk. He just like pauses and looks at you and goes, "I see you uh, took care of it." Yep, that's a word for it. He says, "I'd say I'm impressed that you that a demon spawn was able to kill a legionary, but with the help of a paladin, I don't imagine he was." too far out of your grasp. No, it really wasn't, but turns out demons are pretty tasty. He looks at Hildy and says, uh, glad to see you weren't drunk in a stupor today. Were you drunk in a stupor last time? Yes, I was. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> so, I don't know, uh, I'll look past that. If you're able to kill a demon, that's all I care about. Well, um, usually this is the part where we do the little initiation ritual, la di da. Here's your robes and your your oath and everything. But due to some special we're circumstances, time. we're actually going to make another visit. Come with me. As he gets up out of his chair and strides over to the elevator. All right. I follow, I guess. He um, looks at the button, the, the the panel of many floor buttons, and he p puts his finger on um, on a little sensor, and a red button pops out, and he punches that one at the very top of the panel. The elevator begins to rise. Once you, oh. once you hit floor 50, you hear a ding, and the door opens into a large uh, city skyline viewed office. It is Damn. a grand office with beautiful furniture, sp very spacious, luxury uh, all around you as you approach. At the desk, there seems to be a single man just surrounded by stacks of paperwork. Um, he's a very large 
built man with long white hair. Seems to be in his late 50s. Grizzly, gray hair, not great, but like silverish white hair. Yeah. Red eyes. Kind of similar to my own. Yeah, very similar to yours, but definitely more aged, you can tell. All he, right. He says, Dante, Hildy, please have a seat. I guess I take my seat. <clears throat> As you guys both sit down in these very plush, comfortable chairs, he leans forward and says, do you know who I am? Am I supposed to? I think I've heard your name before. It was <laughs> Axis? You heard correctly. I am the founder and leader of the Cross Organization. Uh, Interesting. It, it, uh, what interests me is that a demon comes to my tower seeking ranks with us. Why is that interesting? Well, most of the time, demons are under the employ of the noble bloods. Or they're rogue. But very few of them have the balls to come here. Well, you made your own organization. I don't see why I can't join it. My question is, how do I know that you're not a planted sleeper cell? The demons are very familiar with who we are. The noble bloods would like to see us dead. I would like to see the noble bloods dead. Why? Reasons that I have yet to figure out as of character development. He eyes you carefully, looking you up and down. It says, how many demons have you killed? One. So far, just the one. Oh, wait, no. That's eight. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> it says, tell me how you got out of hell. Um, I was part of an invasion for invasion force that uh, took us to a city I don't remember. Once the chaos started, um, I then killed uh, a bunch of my a lot of uh, my my uh, platoon, I guess, and made my escape. I see. Well, he just smiles and sits up straight and says, I believe you. <clears throat> Welcome, cool. initiates. Cool. Uh, do we get badges now? Armbands? You will receive your initiate uh, uniforms and your signets and any weapons that you... Uh, require and you will be paid per contract job all right i have a question yes i have an infernal legionnaire sword from the targets that you you uh assigned me is yes. it possible that we can reforge that into a katana <laughs> he smiles just the biggest smile and he says hand that to me i pull it out of my pack, place it on the desk. He takes it, holds it in one hand sideways, and with the other hand, he places, he hovers his hand um, where the very bottom of the sword would be and slowly moves it along the sword all the way to the tip, and as his hand travels, you can see it becoming molten. And with suddenly with both hands, he molds it into a samurai sword, releases his magic, 
and it instantly cools into infernal steel. It hands it to you. to learn this power. It says with enough control, yes. Mito. From a Jedi. But from a Jedi. So he gets out of his chair and walks over to the elevator and says, just know. I'm watching. And he punches it and it opens up for you. Thank you very much. And I put my new katana about, right above my old katana. So now I have two katanas on my belt. <clears throat> Wait. So once uh, you guys step inside, you notice that um, the man who had taken you up there is actually still in the elevator waiting. He says, um, Sergeant Kolthos will uh, go ahead and take these men to the to the basement. He says, I sir. He hits the button and the door shut. He says, uh, he looks at Dante and says, I guess you're telling the truth, huh? Yeah. Well, so for your sake, we're glad. Yeah, my, yeah so am I. Um, I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to have to uh, have us stop right here. Seems like a good place to stop anyway. Okay. Well, basically what we were just about to do is uh, take you down to the basement. It's like a giant locker room kind of like agent preparation area for missions. Yeah. And they were going to give you your um, your stuff. So go ahead and put in your inventories. Hildy, you get um, cross-organization heavy armor. And Dante, you get cross organization um, leather robes. Okay. You also each get grappling hooks. That's for the leather robes. And a grappling hook? Yeah. All right. Cool. So I'm gonna put on here. Um, and uh, you get a cross organization weapon. Is there a weapon that either of you would like? I mean, they gave me my infernal infernal steel katana. Maybe. What weapons can I get? You can get a crossbow, a regular bow. You could probably you can get a gun. You could get uh, sword, glaive, whatever you want, really. Let's make it a um, a um. <clears throat> fuck, what are they called? Let's make it a glaive. You want a glaive? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so your glaive is made of titanium as well. And it's um, enchanted with holy. What should I get? Like a, maybe a better sword? Yeah, you get an, a titanium weapon if you get a melee weapon. So it could be a sword, an axe. Um, it's up to you. Uh, I guess like a broadsword. You also wanted a gun, didn't you? Like a holy gun? Uh, yeah, but that's kind of meany. Okay. You can buy other stuff later from them if you want. You get one free thing at the start. Yeah, let's just go with them. Titanium sword, then. Okay, you each you get a titanium holy glaive and a titanium um, holy broadsword. A glaive and a broadsword. Uh, Dante gets the glaive. You get the broadsword. Okay. And then um, Dante, I'll say the armor level of your leathers. You find that they're actually enchanted with holy magic. 
and they are hard as titanium as well. Hildy, yours is hard as adamant, or uh, adamantine. Nice. Which is pretty fucking tough. I would imagine so. And they are they are enchantedly resistant to unholy magic. That sounds really useful. Oh yeah. So if you get hit with like hellfire or uh, corruption or anything like that, uh, you, wanna, you are resistant to it. You want to test it? I mean, you'll still get hurt by it, but it's just oh, it, okay. it reduces the damage. You're not immune to it. Good point. Cool. All right. Well, that's your rewards. Also, you get your gold from your quest. I'll say it's like 500 gold. Well, oh, damn. It's like 500 each or 500 to split? Uh, 500 to split. All right. Then I'll take... Uh, fuck. Uh, 250. Okay. Well, that's today's session. Uh, good job, Excellent. guys. You guys killed that demon really fucking easily. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. I, was that like, was cool. I didn't expect him to drop that fast. <laughs> uh, he was just rolling so poorly. Jesus. Just wail on him. Just keep wailing on him. Hello, yeah. Lork. Yo. All right, so I got I to gotta go, guys, so I'll see you guys later. So I'll see you, Zach. Take it easy. Yes, I'm Lord. the village idiot. You are the village idiot. Oh, my back is killing me. Why is your back killing you? Wait, like is that really? Sorry, you're going. No, I just have. I'm just disabled. <laughs> so, uh, yes, that... actually, years and years and years ago, uh, it is derived from. From, uh, Axis Seminole. of the Cross organization. Yeah, is the reason why your name is Cross Axis. Well, not directly, but yes. So yes. like, Axis from the Cross organization inspired Axel from the from the Fifth Realm, uh, which carried over to the Last Light, and then from the Last Light, I was like, well, I'll just incorporate that into my gamer tag, and then from <laughs> there, I decided to. I was like, man, Axel, Axel just doesn't really click. I think Axis is better. So I went back to Axis, but I was like, Axis alone isn't cool. So I need to add something to it. So I changed it to Cross Axis. Which sounded really cool. Which ended up happening years in, like, how many years did it take for that? I became, I changed my gamer tag to Cross Axis in like 2017, I think. And Axis from the Seventh World was introduced in like, what, 2009? 2010? Some things just carry on. Oh, my spine. <sighs> I'm actually dying. I'm in a lot of pain.